Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Zeret Rueda, and I will present my work, uh, which has my title, This Perceptual Circuit for the Generation of Autonomous Responses in Virtual Creatures. Okay, so when we speak about taste, uh, meaning human or any kind of creature taste, it's quite self-explanatory because it's something that we all experience day after day, and also it's something that uh, we are able to describe. So, however, even that, it has been a real problem to simulate taste sensations as well as other uh, human processes. And one approach to this problem is cognitive architectures. Uh, they allow us to, to address this kind of problems by abstracting cognitive functions and processes and build models that can be implemented. Now, even with this approach, there is not any cognitive architecture that considers taste into its model and that based on that provides autonomous responses on, on virtual creatures. So if we look to the literature, only one cognitive architecture considered taste and is called NOMAD. So NOMAD was, was implemented in a robot called Darwin. Is that uh, query the robot over there? Um, okay, how, how Darwin using NOMAD um, considers taste? Basically it uses artificial taste sensors uh, based on conductivity. So they make normal to pick up objects using an electromagnet. Uh, is that uh, like circle over his head? And it was controlled by a nervous system. So it can perform the task of sorting conductive blocks of a certain color, which is quite the bad taste and non-conductive blocks of another color, which is the good taste. You can see the blocks right over there. Uh, so if a high conductivity or bad taste is detected, it activates the, the taste cells that excite the avoidance reflex. This causes NOMA to move away from, from that particular block or object's direction. So this actually relates to the problem that uh, there is, again, not much or not any other cognitive architecture that allows us to process gustatory information and that can be implemented on virtual creatures because this was implemented on a robot and it was uh, designed specifically for, for this robot. So we cannot generate any kind of, of other responses. So the objectives of our work are uh, first, the identification of computational works that address affective processes or in the taste. Then analyze uh, neuroscientific information for build an informal model of perceptual circuit of taste. Then generate a perceptual taste circuit that allows generating autonomous responses and learn affected taste evaluations oriented to perceive the stimuli. Uh, after that, of course, implement the model using a distributed platform. And finally, test the system and validate the results. Okay, so the first step was identify the, the brain structures involved in the, in the process. So everyone who research something in this field, we realize that the information from the different perspectives, uh, psychology, neuroscience, biology, is wide. And sometimes it's even contradictory between each other. So in order to identify the most important brain structures uh, involved in the story circuit, we grab uh, the most relevant proposals and we identify those structures that, that were clearly involved.
So after we identify those uh, important structures, we came up with this conceptual model. Uh, so we built this model using the same approach, actually. Uh, so let me do it quickly and explain uh, the model. I'm not sure if you are able to, to see it. It's a little bit uh, small. But basically, everything is starts in the oral cavity, which is the circle uh, in the bottom. Uh, we have, uh, of course, taste spots uh, in oral, oral, oral cavity that acts as uh, uh, sensors. So all the taste bonds that we have uh, passes information throughout uh, the cranial nerves. Uh, we have four cranial nerves that passes information to the brain. Uh, number five, number 10, number uh, nine, and number seven. So only number five, which is the uh, instrumental, uh, passes other kind of information from the mouth as well. Uh, passes uh, temperature, passes pain, for, for instance. So all these relies in the NTS, the, the nucleus of the solitary tract. Uh, and this acts like as a uh, first relay. It just grab uh, the information from the cranial nerves. Okay. Then the the information is passes uh, to the BPMPC. Is is the nucleus of a nucleus of the of the um, thalamus. And then the information is split up in the insula, which is the primary um, gustatory cortex. Is if you you go over the literature, it is named like this because uh, this structure is actually the, the one that identifies the, the the different kind of flavors that we have. Also, it measures uh, the intensity of the flavors as well as as other kind of of um, measurements along with, with several other sensory information. Also the information is passed to, to the um, mesolimbic system, which uh, the lighting circuit takes place. And then the information is passed to the uh, OFC, which is like the secondary um, gustatory cortex. There, the quality is measured, uh, the quality of, of the flavors. Uh, it takes information from the mesolimbic system, from um, the metabolic system as well, and from other sensory information. For, for instance, olfactory, uh, visual, and texture. So after we identified uh, and build this conceptual model from uh, the neuroscience uh, literature, <coughs> we built uh, this uh, proposed uh, model. So you will find that each module has an abstracted functionality of the perceptual model. Uh, in this diagram, uh, you see white um, black boxes. So these black modules are parts of the system that we did not formalize because uh, they were too complex to do it. Uh, so we treat them like black boxes that just provide uh, values or inputs to the other systems uh, without real processing. Uh, so first we have the, the gustatory uh, input view that just provides uh, gustatory information to the system. Then we have the sensory receptor that, that is an abstraction of the taste buds. Uh, this module converts the perceived stimuli into taste signals within the virtual creature. They modify the intensity over time and send information throughout the different channels uh, simultaneously. Then the NTS acts as a gateway because it just encodes the taste signals coming from the different channels and creates a single flow information. 
and then send in to the, to the module of selective preference. Uh, the selective preference actually, actually remains as a black box uh, due to the lack of information in the literature, too, uh, but uh, we decided to keep it there. Then we have the intensity evaluation module uh, that is like the main module in the system. It alters the flavors values depending on the levels of suppression that exist between them. So for instance, uh, if you as a human taste sweet and bitter at the same time, um, you're going to find that uh, bitter suppress sweet and sweet suppress bitter as well. So uh, these kind of suppressions uh, take place in, in the intensity evaluation module. Also, there are some cases in which uh, the flavor is increased. For instance, when you consume um, I don't know, umami and sweet, uh, both of them increase in intensity. Then we have the quality evaluation. Uh, this box is responsible for evaluate quality. Um, it's, it's different, the intensity or the quality, and all of them are correlated, but in, is a different value. So actually we decided to keep this module as a black box to the uh, real complexity of the, of, of the module because uh, in order to, to achieve a quality evaluation, you need to uh, have other kind of information uh, like emotional information and you need to have like um, needs, uh, motivations, and um, all this kind of information relies on quality. So that's why we, we decided to keep it on as a black box. Then we have the regulatory assessment. Uh, this is responsible for regulating the homostatic state of the virtual creature. Uh, and we also remain as a black box because we, we didn't uh, actually develop a, a, a homeostatic uh, state in the virtual creature. Okay, then we have the emotional response. Uh, so based on the information provided, it gives an emotional response. Uh, so the output of, the, of this module is an assessment of, of likes or dislikes towards the flavor states by the virtual creature. And lastly, we, we uh, as an output, as, a, as a actually a normal response, we have the facial expression that processes the emotional response and generates an, ex an actual expression in the creature. That denotes the level of pleasure or dislike. So I'm not going to go over the formulas of each module because of uh, the, the short time that we have. Uh, but I just wanted to explain each module uh, as separately and just to point that we have a modularized set system. Uh, I was supposed to change this. <laughs> okay, so for the implementation, um, for implement our model, we create a distributed system based on a microservices architecture. Uh, this allows us to process the flows of information simultaneously of the different modules of the system, um, giving, of course, a more realistic ecosystem in general. Uh, we did not implement the black box modules. Uh, we just inverted their, their values. Okay, so in order to taste, test our system, uh, we create a very simple case of the studies. Uh, basically, we grab two flavors uh, that both suppress each other, is like actually the example that I gave before. Uh, we, we pick sweet and bitter, and we test our system providing the, the, the platform with different in initial intensities. We also consider an effective value for, for each other of the flavors just to um, make them more 
like um, realistic. Okay, so this is how it looks the initial parameters. Obviously, in order to test the system, we needed to configure the whole environment with a set of values. So uh, these are the ones that I consider most important. Uh, we have the max time of flavor in this receptor. This is when you consume something, when, when you taste something in your mouth, um, the flavor remains for, for, for um, maybe three, between three and 16 seconds. So we hard code that value. Um, we also have the alteration rate, rate for sweet and bitter and the alteration rate for bitter with sweet. And this is uh, when, again, when you taste sweet and bitter, there is a suppression level between each other. So uh, obviously it's different for, for each people, for, for each person. Um, but in order to test our system, we uh, decided to hard code these values as like this. Um, finally, a function for flavor times and intensity. Uh, this will be more clear uh, on the results, but basically, uh, again, when you take something, it remains in your mouth and that, that has a function. Um, so normally the function is something like, like a Gaussian, uh, you will see a graph like this uh, in normal persons. Obviously, it's not like each of us has a has a has the same function. Um, so to test our system, we provide this function, which is basically a core. Then we provide emotional responses, which in this case is just neutral, pleasing, or diversity. And the emotional response threshold that is uh, basically depending the the value of each flavor, uh, it will provide a, a response. So these values, these thresholds are, are these ones. And also we set as uh, some conditions. What happens when bitter is greater than sweet, and when sweet is greater than bitter? Uh, because if you taste two flavors at the same time someone will be uh, greater than the other. So depending on which is greater, you need to handle the, the output differently. Okay, so this is uh, how our results looks. Uh, I know that it's small, but uh, super small. But uh, let me just try to explain it. Uh, in this table, you will see um, three rows. That's that's because uh, I we said the time, max time of the flavor in the mouth as, as three. So this is the seconds that the mouth uh, has that flavor. And okay, I, I'm not going to explain uh, each column, of, of course, but. You will see how the, the, the intensity of the flavor changes over, over time and over the circuit. So at the end, we have uh, a response, an emotional response uh, that is translated in a facial uh, expression. Okay. Um, Okay, I know that it's a little bit hard to, to um, explain graphs that are this small, but uh, basically uh, in this graph, we uh, graph three things, three important things. Um, one is how the initial flavor, uh, we have two flavors here, bitter and sweet. So red ones are, are bitter and blue ones are sweet. And how the initial is suppressed by the other one. So you see a red line, two red lines, one uh, over the other. So that's because uh, the, the, the first line is the initial intensity that was suppressed by the blue line, which is sweet. So the uh, bitter just go down 
and this is the graph, this is the minimum. Also, we have a green line, which is the total impact. So once you have uh, two flavors, you need, at, at the end, you need to have a, an impact in the in the creature. So it could be good, could be bad. Uh, so that green line um, represents the total impact of the two flavors. And the yellow line is just the threshold. So uh, the first point two seconds was a uh, neutral response. And after that was just aversive because we passed in this particular test um, a high percentage of bitter and a lower percentage of sweet. So in the second graph is actually the same test. Uh, we pass a high percentage of of bitter and a low percentage of sweet. But we also provide uh, an effective value for each flavor. So what happened was that the thresholds that we have just move. And if in the first case, we have a neutral and an aversive, in the second graph, we have a neutral, pleasant, and aversive because the affective values that we said was uh, that the creature in that moment liked uh, the bitter uh, flavor. So basically, that's the meaning of these graphs are the same test, just with different affective values. In the first one, we don't have any affective value for bitter or sweet. And the second one, we have a, a, an affective value for the bitter, the creature likes the bitter. And this result is pretty much the same, but the difference is that we play with the sweet um, flavor. So in this case, we first provide uh, zero affective or not. Let's say like is like the na na natural uh, behavior of the human in the first uh, graph, in which if you consume sweet, you will have first in the over the time a neutral response then a pleasant response and, and if the sweet is too much we have an aversive response and in the second graph same test but now uh, we set a really high um, affective value for the sweet so uh, now it doesn't matter how much sweet the creature consumes it, it will be pleasant or less uh, so the same test just i move the uh, thresholds with affective uh, values, changing the affective values. So the conclusion is that the proposal model is functional in calculating the intensities for ritual creatures. It also gives uh, natural behaviors, even if the tests were quite simple. Uh, also, the proposal algorithm when inspired by the evidence collected from the processing of the different brain regions and the general structures of the human body. And it is possible to incorporate the proposed model into a more robust system that allows the virtual creature to behave, take decisions, and learn in more, a more natural manner. Actually, uh, this uh, small model has uh, very simple values and very simple functions in order to uh, just taste it. Um, but uh, it can be, of course, fitted by uh, more robust uh, systems and more robust algorithms. Uh, so I think that this is so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, we have time just for one question. Okay. Uh, I, I, was, I was wondering that uh, the modeling that you have developed can be very useful, for example, in food industry for making uh, food quality control or things like that. Uh, particularly one uh, part of, of food industry that is wine evaluation could be very uh, interesting to have a, a system that could make uh, evaluation of wines depending on, 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 on the taste that you, you get from the wine. But I was thinking, uh, what about the sensors? How to get real sensors for these uh, five uh, features that you, okay, in a simulation you can do that very easily, but in, in, a, in a real 
uh, environment, how can you get this information uh, from the environment? Yes, actually, um, this is the, that's actually the hard part, the hardest part. That's why uh, we don't have many cognitive architectures that achieve this. Um, and that's also why we did it for a virtual creature because we don't need uh, that kind of sensors, of course. Uh, if in some point of life we uh, build this kind of sensor, uh, this model could just uh, be incorporated to that information, of course. But now uh, we don't have that, so that's the problem, and that's why uh, not much cognitive architecture content with taste. Uh, Thank you, Daria, for your presentation.